Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter. The ancient cry, the Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. The good news that we have echoes out around the world. And as we celebrate on this Easter Sunday, I invite you in a special way to be listening to the gospel reading, the encounter of the empty tomb. I'll talk about that in the homily. Some of you might be wondering, who is this server who is going to be processing in with the crucifix and assisting a little bit at Mass? He's one of our newest seminarians, Andrew Smith, who has just started studying last fall for our diocese. Would you join me in welcoming Andrew to the cathedral? <laughs> My friends, please stand. Greet those around you. Let's get ready to pray.
Son have conquered death and unlocked for us the path to eternity. Grant, we pray, that we who keep the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection may through the renewal brought by your Spirit rise up in the light of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Peter proceeded to speak and said, You know what has happened all over Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John preached, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power. He went about doing good and healing all those oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. This man God raised on the third day and granted that he would be visible, not to all the people, but to us, the witnesses chosen by God in advance, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commissioned us to preach to the people and testify that he is the one appointed by God as the judge of the living and the dead. To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, do you not know that a little yeast leavens all the dough? Clear out the old yeast, so that you may become a fresh batch of dough, inasmuch as you are unleavened. For our Paschal Lamb, Christ, has been sacrificed. Therefore, let us celebrate the feast, not with the old yeast, the yeast of malice and wickedness, but with the unleavened bread of sincerity and you. The word of the Lord. came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark 
and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, They've taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran. But the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there, and the cloth that had covered his head, not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first, and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture, that he had to rise from the dead. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Years ago, I was over at the hospital visiting some folks and kind of wrapped up on the oncology floor. And I was getting ready to leave when one of the nurses caught me and she said, Father, we had a patient who was going in for a major surgery to remove a tumor. They came in, if they're not from the area, and uh, his wife's here. And she's, she's really having a hard time. She's in the waiting room for the, the surgical operations. Would you go down and, and visit? I said, sure. So I, I went down and it was really tough. She's all alone. They kind of had to rush this thing and has no support around her. So we hung out for a couple of hours. And you know, fear is a nasty thing. Fear of the unknown, especially. And the longer she'd been sitting there by herself, the more the fear just came up and overshadowed her and really got her spun up. And we were able to talk, we were able to visit, but still that fear, that driving, overwhelmed fear, that sense that this is, this is going to turn out ugly, this is going to turn out terrible, and I'm all alone. And it just kept building and building and building, and while we sat, at one point, the surgery had ended. The surgeon had come out. And this particular doctor, she was very kind. And she just went right up to this woman and she said, we got it. We got the whole thing. Your tumor, it's gone. And this woman who had been so wrapped up in fear, just all of a sudden, complete shock and awe at such good news. A tidal wave of emotion literally comes rushing over with the good news. Couldn't speak. Literally was just at that moment caught right back and filled with such good news in the face of such fear that for a few moments just sat there to take it all in. It's going to be okay. In fact, it's going to be great. And when it finally, finally sunk in, then the tears flowed, and then the emotions came. And then it was, I got, I got to call. I got to call the kids. I got to tell them. I got to spread the word. Because it's good. And to see that transition of the darkness of fear and how it just can run amok to this overwhelming joy that leads to, I got to tell somebody. Welcome to Easter. Here's Mary Magdalene. And she has gone through that darkness of fear, that sadness, that horrible moment to have stood before the cross and to see him completely broken and battered and bruised, bleeding and killed. And then to come and it's got to take time to sink in. The stones rolled away. The burial cloths are there. The tomb is empty. He's alive. 
And as that message is going to go out into the church, as that shock and awe of good news is going to be expressed, it takes time to sink in. It takes time to to finally dawn upon people that the darkness, the fear, the terror, the grief, it's gone. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. And that kind of good news that can stir us at the very core of our being, sometimes we need a moment to really ponder what this means. Sin and death are broken. That the hope that we now have in Christ means that when our eyes close here on earth, they will open to see Jesus. That the hope that we have is that whatever has gone before us, whatever mistakes we have made, sins we've committed, there's a way back. Paid in blood by Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, that we might have hope to turn from our sins and turn to the Lord. And with that good news, the shock and awe is meant to sink in. And you know, there's a reason why the season of Easter lasts 50 days. It took the disciples that long just for them to figure out how good the news really was. And as that news changed them, it transformed them and then filled with the Spirit to go out into the world and proclaim to tell this good news that others might have hope, that others might have life and strength and courage to face any fear, any darkness, any sin. This is the good news of Easter. And this is the very foundation of Easter joy. And folks, if it's going to shock and awe in our hearts, it's got to shake us up and wake us up that we live with that good news. And that good news drives everything that we do, how we live, how we act, and how we walk through this life in preparation for the life to come. We've got good news. And to live by that good news means that it changes us for the better. It strengthens us for whatever difficulties we face. It gives us direction in times of uncertainty or fear. And it empowers us when we feel like we got no gas in the tank. The good news that Christ is alive, raised from the dead, sustains us in our dark moments. And that means practically that on this Easter day, if there's anything that has transpired within our lives, anything that has been broken or wounded, today is a good day to bring good news to it. That in the light of the risen Lord, Today's a good day. If there's someone that we've got to look in the eye and say, hey, I'm sorry. Hey, I forgive you. Hey, I love you. Today's a good day to do it and say it. That if there's been anything broken or wounded, maybe in the light of this good news, we're changed to be able to make something beautiful and blessed and whole. To call upon God's help. To let that good news flow through us. And if there's some sin that's been hanging there like a boat anchor in our soul, today might be that day to be able to say, i got to get to confession. That in this season of Easter, I'm going to make time. Because I don't want to live in that darkness and fear anymore. I don't want to be bound by that pain or that suffering or that harm anymore. I want to be freed from it and allow the light that we have in Christ to shine through everything that I say and do. Folks, the good news is meant to fundamentally, at the core, break the bonds of sin and death. It's meant to change us for the better and allow us, configured to Christ, to commit our hearts to live as he commanded, to love, to serve, to forgive. May the good news speak to us. May it have shock and awe to wake us up, to live for Christ, and to offer our lives for him. God bless you all. Dear brothers and sisters, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may walk with him in newness of life. And so, now that our Lenten observance is concluded, let us renew the promises of holy baptism by which we once renounced Satan and his works and promised to serve God in the Holy Catholic Church. 
And so I ask you, do you renounce Satan and all his works and all his empty show? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, suffered death and was buried, rose again from the dead, and is seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? May Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and bestowed on us forgiveness of our sins, keep us by his grace in Christ Jesus our Lord for eternal life. Amen. I will tell you, friends, that there are certain times of the year I love in a special way. Right now is one of them. Andrew, will you grab that water? <laughs> that one, right? Now, Andrew, this is in the seminary starting. I'll be right back. There's a little one right now. <laughs> we will see number seven. prejudice, slavery, hatred, and injustice of every sort may be put to death through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord. For the grace to persevere in living our faith, especially through fidelity to Sunday Mass and the sacraments, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That the event of Easter will deeply change our lives with shock and awe, renewing our families and blessing us with the new beginning that we need, we pray to the Lord. Lord. That the Holy Spirit will guide the continuing work of the World Synod, we pray to the Lord. Lord. 
for the intention of this Mass, the spiritual and temporal welfare of our cathedral family, we pray to the Lord. For all of you at home, for the prayers you offer in the comment line, and for all of us, for the prayers we now offer in silence. We pray to the Lord. Gracious and loving God, look kindly upon us. Hear the prayers we offer now, spoken and silent. We make them all in the name of Jesus, our Lord. O oh God, we earnestly ask you to bless our diocese with many priests, brothers, sisters, and deacons who will love you with their whole mind and heart and gladly spend their entire lives serving your church and making you known and loved. Bless our families, bless our children, and choose from our homes those needed for your work. Mary, Queen of the Clergy, pray for us, pray for our priests, religious and deacons. Obtain for us many more. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Exultant with paschal gladness, O Lord, we offer the sacrifice by which your church is wondrously reborn and nourished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but above all to laud you yet more gloriously on this day when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb 
who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Pleased, O oh God, we pray to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O oh God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice, in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. A mystery of faith. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection. 
resurrection from the dead and the glorious ascension into heaven. Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants, and your holy people offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us, who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your Son, may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have died, who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. To us also, your servants, who, though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy Eucharist. I love you with all my heart, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually within me. I love you above all things, and desire to unite myself to you.
Look upon your church, O God, with unfailing love and favor, so that renewed by the Paschal Mysteries, she may come to the glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. I have one announcement. Please be seated. Next Sunday, the second Sunday of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday, you're all invited to come on back here to the cathedral. Uh, the Society of St. Vincent de Paul will host its annual free pancake breakfast, a community breakfast, open to the public free of charge. It's a chance for if people want to give a free will offering, they can do that, but it's, it's really open to everyone. They're going to serve from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. next Sunday. There's also going to be a silent auction. They'll raise a little money on the side, but they want to feed people. Pancakes, sausage, and all the trimmings with that. It's a beautiful breakfast. Please come. Please invite people to come. So that when we draw together in faith, in fellowship, and to help the needs of those less fortunate within our own community. The Society does such good work here in Superior. And if you can help us out, support us, come to the breakfast, and certainly keep the community in their prayers, we appreciate that. I pray for all of you, you have a blessed, holy, marvelous Easter day. That it does shock and awe within our hearts to change us. And whether you have a big group or a small one, may it be blessed. May you have, you know, ham, or ravioli, or as I will today, Father Anthony is cooking for me curried chicken, curried pork, curried vegetables, with a whole lot of hot spices on top of it. If I am not here on Tuesday for the daily mass, you'll know why. Looking forward though to breaking bread so to speak, with Father Anthony and having Easter dinner with him today. But for all of you, happy Easter. Please stand. Friends, today I'd like to give you a solemn blessing. So for each of these invocations, belt out an amen, bow your heads, and pray for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you through today's Easter solemnity and in his compassion defend you from every assault of sin. Amen. And may he who restores you to eternal life in the resurrection of his only begotten endow you with the prize of immortality. Amen. Now that the days of the Lord's passion have drawn to a close, may you who celebrate the gladness of the Paschal Feast Come with Christ's help and exulting in spirit to those feasts that are celebrated in eternal joy. Amen. And my dear friends, may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace. Alleluia.